What do you first see when you look at someone? Obviously, you see their appearance. You see their body, their arms, their legs, their face, their eyes. You see everything that's on the surface. What you don't see is what's on the inside. You can't see how their body functions. You can't see their numerous systems. The circulatory system, the muscular system, the nervous system, and many more. These systems are all made out of organs. The circulatory system, for example, contains the heart. What are our organs made out of? They're made out of tissues that are made out of cells that contain cores, otherwise known as nuclei. Now, our nuclei, they contain what makes us us. They contain our desoxyribonucleic acid, also known as our DNA. A lot of it, actually. If we would stretch out all of our DNA in our body into one single strand, it would stretch out about 1.2 billion kilometers. That would mean you could stretch it to the sun and back four times. It would take light over an hour to travel from one end to the other. Now this strand, it's composed of four chemical bases, cytosine, guanine, thymine, and adenine, which bond with each other to create our genes. These four chemical bases are actually molecules. What are molecules? Well, molecules are assortments of even smaller particles called atoms. The atoms are organized in a way where they are stable. That's actually the reason they group up into molecules, to become stable. They have too much energy on their own, therefore they will grab a hold of other atoms, in other words, create bonds, to actually release some energy. Now. Most teachers will stop here in their classes, but there's a lot of the picture that's still missing. The atom has two parts to it. There's the nucleus of the atom that has a positive electrical charge, not to be confused with the nucleus of the cell. The second part is the electrons, which revolve around the nucleus in a quantum cloud of probability. I'll get back into that later. They have a negative charge between the electrons and the nucleus is nothing. Well. Absolutely nothing. It's a vacuum. It's empty space. This emptiness actually is a giant part of the atom. It's 99.999999999999% of the atom. Just to put that into perspective, if we were to take a hydrogen atom which contains only one electron and we would inflate it to where the nucleus would be the size of a marble, the one electron would be half a football field away. All of the area between is empty space. Now the nucleus itself, the marble, is actually composed of two subatomic particles, the proton and the neutron. The proton is the particle that gives the nucleus its positive charge. It has a charge of plus one. The neutron is what holds the nucleus together. Without it, the nucleus would explode because the protons would push each other away like two identical magnets. Let's keep digging deeper. Believe it or not, there is more particles that are more fundamental than the proton and neutron. Now we're talking quantum physics. These are called quarks. They are what make up protons and neutrons. There are several different types of quarks, but the two key ones are up and down quarks. The up quark has a charge of plus two thirds, and the down quark has a charge of minus one third. In the proton, we find two up quarks and one down quark, giving a total charge of plus one. In the neutron, we find two down quarks and one up quark, giving a total charge of zero, making it neutral. As for the electron, there is no particle that makes it up. It is an elementary particle. Physicists have actually made a table that groups up all of the elementary particles. We call it the standard model of particle physics. There's three groups of elementary particles. There are the quarks, that we call matter. There are the leptons. The electron is part of that group. 
And finally, there are the bosons. These are the force carrying particles. On top of all of these, there is the Higgs particle. This is the particle that gives all of the others mass. To further complicate the standard model, each quark and each lepton has a corresponding antiparticle that has the opposite electrical charge. The electron has the positron. When a particle antiparticle pair meet, they annihilate, creating gamma rays. Basically, everything in the universe is made out of these particles. On top of these particles just existing, they also have to interact. They do so via the four fundamental forces. They are gravity, the electromagnetic force, the weak force, and the strong force. Each force has a boson that carries it. The strong force has the gluon, the weak force has the W and Z bosons, the electromagnetic force has the photon, and gravity, on the other hand, doesn't have a particle, or at least it hasn't been discovered yet. These four bosons are exchanged between leptons and quarks during interactions changing their velocity and or properties. An example of an interaction is when you touch something. When you're sitting on a chair, the atoms of your pants aren't actually touching the atoms of the chair. There is a repulsion force being exerted between the atoms. Well, actually, between the electrons. Since they're both negatively charged, they push on each other, which prevents us from falling through the chair. At the quantum level, there are photons popping in and out of existence, colliding with the electrons, preventing any contact between them. Other than this, there's also the gluon, which holds quarks together to create protons and neutrons, as well as holding nucleons together to create atomic nuclei. The weak force is a bit more complicated, but it happens in the sun due to it playing an essential role in nuclear fusion. As for gravity, well, science still has yet to find a particle for gravity. It's what most physicists consider the missing link between quantum mechanics and Einstein's general theory of relativity which is the theory that explains gravity. In consequence, modern day physicists have developed different theories to try to compensate for the missing particle. One of them, which is actually well accepted by the scientific community, is quantum field theory, which postulates the idea that we are surrounded by invisible, superposed fields, sort of like fish in water. The fish don't know that they are in water, but it sure is there. There is supposedly a field for each particle in the standard model. A particle would be an excitation in its corresponding field. This theory is way easier to understand in two dimensions. Say a field is a flat plane. A particle would be a vibration of a point in the field. Like all vibrations, it creates a wave that quantum physicists like to call a wave of probability. The particle itself can be found anywhere in this wave. This explains what I said earlier about how electrons orbit their nucleus. Since quantum mechanics is entirely based on probability and uncertainty, we can never predict where the electron can be at a given time. Pretty crazy, right? Another theory that is more or less accepted by the science community is string theory. The theory of everything. It postulates that all particles are actually identical strings that have different vibrations to correspond to different types of particles. Yeah, we are all made out of all of that. Pretty amazing, right? Even though we are all just tiny particles arranged in a particular order or an assembly of excitations of various quantum fields or even just strings, we all have certain aspects that make us unique. We all look different, we all have different DNA, we all have different goals, hopes, dreams, and most importantly, we all have a different personality. At the end of the day, you decide what makes you you. Thanks for watching.